Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. And indeed, this is a live news show for movie fans where we talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day, including what The Little Mermaid is being projected to make at the box office. We got some quotes about Asteroid City. Asteroid City. Florence Pugh talks about uh, fans not liking that she uh, this is starting to do these big blockbusters. But then we got a whole bunch of sequel news. Ice Road 2, Good Burger 2. Oh yeah, that's the one we've all been waiting for. Uh, Deadpool 3, uh, Venom 3. But we start off today's show by talking about The Flash and that final trailer, guys. Did you watch it? Did you check it out this morning? The Flash director just announced the movie's most shocking cameo. That's decades in the making. And it's, uh, it's out now, guys. Um, the trailer for this. And uh, some of the cameos uh, that are being reported. Because people have seen this now, right? Uh, people have seen this movie. Um, and it's got to be... Uh, you got to take this now. If you don't want things spoiled for you. Uh, this trailer doesn't spoil too much. I think for the most part, a lot of people were shocked to see Offred in this. Well, we saw Ben Affleck's Batman was in this. So it kind of makes sense that... Uh, Uh, it makes sense that, you know, Alfred would be there. Jeremy Irons. And I always really liked Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Uh, a lot. I really did. I, I, I like the chemistry that he had with uh, Ben Affleck. And it's kind of a bummer that, uh, well, you know, he's this is his last outing as Alfred, man. Uh, uh, unless somehow a new script comes along and Ben Affleck says that, okay, I'll come back. Um, that's the only way that we'll get that back. Unless they do some infinite earth thing like years down the road which is probably more likely what's going to happen and it's the only way that we're going to see these characters again because it is the final send-off for this iteration of the of the schneider verse and it's going to kick into whatever james gunn's uh, version is going to be um and it sucks because you heard reports that uh ben affleck's like i finally got this character working the way that i wanted to right but he's he's himself was kind of like no i'm done I'm done. I'm out, uh, which sucks because I really liked his Batman. Uh, I uh, I like the Snyderverse characters. It's just um, they it was it was too ambitious. I think destroy. Uh, they should have uh, streamlined it a little bit. Uh, but the final trailer's out, and we really get that that it's all about him trying to save his mother. I think that's going to be the emotional backbone of this movie, and. Uh, you know, in all of the other realms, her, uh, his mother or Flash's mother dies and, uh, you know, he just can't live with it. So in this trailer, yeah, he sees he he runs into the other Barry in that universe. We see some Zod in there, which is cool. Um, and then we see a Supergirl come in and fight. I think she fights Feyora first here, right? She punches Feyora and not quite. fights uh, Zod. And I think they're only going to be min minor I don't. I don't think that's going to be like the big fight. I actually think that that sequence here with uh, here. I think like it, it would seem like this would be like the big final battle, right? But I'm thinking that this happens like more towards like the middle of the movie, and the big bad guy is like the evil version of the Flash, uh, which I think we will see later on. Uh, been doing a really good job at hiding the fact that there's going to be an evil flash and then we see batman uh, michael keaton's batman with all of his different suits there different iterations the one with the goggles too and stuff like that and we know that he's been around for a while fighting other different villains and stuff so that's going to be cool uh you hear good things about uh ezra miller's performance in this like all of that look like look at that that's so iconic that's tim burton-esque right there um so happy that they're paying respects to this and as i said a lot of the articles out there now guys are starting to put out spoilers for this stuff so for me i'm kind of like all the tv spots and articles i would just wait until <laughs> uh, unless you don't care about spoilers then go ahead and read them but th that that article that i showed you there spoiled a pretty major one um so Spoilers don't really matter that much to me, but if if it does to you, then yeah, be careful out there with all of the uh, with all the uh, 
news that's coming out. Uh, the director, Andy Muschietti, Mash Muschietti even addressed it there in this article. And uh, I can't wait to see how that pans out on the big screen. That, that the, Yeah, the cameos. Because he's going through different uh, universes and stuff to find the one that his mother's still alive in. So just let your imagination go and you can probably surmise some of the great cameos that we're going to get in this. And it, it just makes me it makes me really happy here. Let's go over to what some of the comments were in this uh, comment section for this trailer. Not only we see Ben Affleck as Batman one more time, but we also get to see Jeremy Irons as Alfred one more time. Yes, uh, for sure. Seeing Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck, and Michael Shannon all back on their respective characters definitely does put a huge smile on my face. This new Batman is amazing. I love how he saves those girls in the beginning from being attacked by Ezra Miller. What? Is that someone just being facetious? When Ben, uh, when Batflick says, I need you here now, Barry, his voice sounds exactly like Kevin Conroy. I get goosebumps all over my body. Yeah. Um, cameos, guys. Ben Affleck really was an epic Batman. It was a shame we'll never see a solo uh, Batfleck movie. Yeah, it, it, it truly is. Um, but all the hoopla around that first Justice League movie really despirited Ben Affleck to the point that he was just kind of like, no, I, I don't want to do it anymore. And that kind of sucks. It really sucks for us fans of uh, this iteration. And who, did you ever think you would see this car again? This Batmobile? I just thought it was so cool, man. So, when does it come out? June 16th is when The Flash comes out, guys. The Flash and that final trailer, it worked for me. It worked for me a lot. Um, it was pretty cool, man. So, there we go. Like... Michael Keaton could still do it, man. He could still be Batman. And it sucks that we don't get to see what work he did for the Batgirl movie, too. That sucks, too. Um, yeah. Now, we got some new posters out for this as well. Uh, and we'll take a look at that. I'm Jay True for as Feora. Tamora Morrison as Tom Curry. He, play, he takes over as one of the fathers, I guess, right? No, Tom Curry. Oh, sorry, he's the father of, uh, of uh, Aquaman. So do we, are we, yeah, I would imagine that we would see Aquaman in here as well. Uh, I don't want to go too far into the cast list in case it does spoil some of the uh, cameos that they've been doing a good job at keeping secret, keeping private. So let's take a look at some of the posters that were released. Uh, I like how it kind of like bleeds into everything. There's the, uh, the bat wing going down. We know that. So it's slight, this one's slightly cartoonish, but it's got the both Batmans on there, right? Got Zod there. Again, they're trying to really sell Zod as the big bad guy, but he's not, right? We know that it's the evil Flash. Or at least that's what we surmise right now. Uh, going over, trying out this other one, the IMAX poster. That one's kind of sleek. Uh, it's this one, either neither of these are ones that I would put up on my wall. But, uh, that one's kind of cool. I dig that one. What do you guys think about some of these posters? Uh, do you dig them? Let me know in the comments. Uh, and what did you think about the Flash movie? Uh, trailer. Final trailer. June 16th, man, is just around the corner. And, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. This is one I'm going to be seeing opening night. I'm going to give you my, uh, my reaction straight out of the theater reaction for this one for sure. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we will talk about it. Let's get into the next topic, Venom 3. Yes, Venom 3, guys. Venom 3 enlists Justice League cinematographer Fabian Wagner. Justice League, yeah. Um, well, we were just talking about that. the Schneiderverse and the DCU. So uh, Venom 3 is going to have, well, Reasonable good cinematography, I would imagine. The person's worked on a comic book movie before. Uh, this should be getting underway pretty soon, I would imagine. Venom 3. Because uh, I think the script was done before the writer's strike. But I'm guessing that it may get put up into the air. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kelly Marcel 
will be making her directorial debut with uh, Venom 3. Marcel wrote the screenplay from the story she co-wrote with Hardy. Yeah, well, we know that Hardy has been putting his uh, inputs on the script for this. Guys, the way I feel about Venom 3 is this. He was fine for the first one, and I was really excited that they were going to use Carnage in the second one, but they committed one of the most grotesque errors you can do with a villain like uh, Carnage. You don't kill him off in one film. He's a, he's a multi-tier villain where you want to use him through a big arc. And he should have been like the big bad guy that faces off in the third one. And they should have enlisted Spider-Man for him to come in and fight along Venom. But we know from the MCU that this version of Venom is not going to be the one that ever meets Spider-Man. Because Tom Hardy got pulled into that universe with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. But then at the end of uh, No Way Home, he gets, or was it Endgame? He gets sucked, he gets turned back to his own. Or no, 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 it was No Way Home. Yeah, at the end of No Way Home, Tom Hardy goes back to his own universe, which is kind of like, oh, guys, at least you delivered the symbiote to uh, Tom Holland's universe. It's just kind of like, we'll never get the Spider-Man in there, unless somehow Tom Hardy's Venom takes place in uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man universe, and they have a face-off and showdown like that which could still happen, but they would have to work, a, they would have to massage the story a little bit to make that happen. But I think that would be something that everybody would like to see. And then finally, um, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man would face off against an alien, which they kind of alluded to in No Way Home. So it's possible. But uh, cinematography wise, we, we're in, we're in okay hands here. Fabian Wagner also includes credits from Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, which House of the Dragon, that, that looked really cool, man. So what do, you, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and we will talk about it. Let's talk about Deadpool 3. Yeah, the sequel talk today. Well, hey, we are a movie talk channel, so uh, that's what we do here. We talk movies. Deadpool 3 officially starts filming. That's good. Uh, Deadpool 3 has finally started production, so it sounds like they're going to go ahead without any hindrance. Well, actually, they are going to have hindering things happening because of the writer's strike. Because of the writer's strike, they're not allowed to improvise on screen, on set, from what I understand, which is going to be hard because Ryan Reynolds likes to improvise and working with Hugh Jackman in this, because we know that Hugh Jackman's in this, uh, he's going to be back as Wolverine. Um, how could you not let those two actors just let loose and say, okay, guys, come up with your, uh, just, just let your, let your acting muscles go and create here. We have a scene with you two driving, but just have at it, man. Uh, you can't do that apparently with the writer's strike. So I think that may hinder it. Hopefully that's why they need to settle this writer's strike, man. They need to settle this as quickly as possible. So, um, it is slated for release next year. Um, and it's, I'm guessing that they're still going forward with it because they do want to hit that deadline of November 8th, 2024. Uh, Feige, Kevin Feige says it's amazing. And we've got Hugh Jackman coming back for our first Deadpool film within the MCU. This one will take part in the MCU. And that's our first R rated film to have. Hugh back is incredible for him, for me, and I think all the fans of Marvel. It's unbelievable that happened in those 23 years. It's very full circle having him come back and in this new Deadpool movie, Kevin Feige said. So, and we know that this is going to like start to help usher in mutants into the MCU because, well, Deadpool's a mutant, right? And so is, so is Wolverine. I just don't know how they're going to deal with the Wolverine. Because this is it for Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. He said that Logan was going to be the final one, but uh, somehow Ryan Reynolds worked his magic and said, please, 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 please. We can make this. We can do this. And uh, I think they're going to deliver something really special for us fans. My my thoughts are, because they are going to do the X-Men in the MCU, and it's going to be a different Wolverine. 
It's going to be. So uh, I don't know how they're going to work that, but it, they could just say that he gets sucked into another or he comes in from another multiverse kind of thing. He's a variant of the Wolverine kind of thing. Um, it's an easy workaround. But I'm looking forward to it. So it's officially started production, Deadpool 3. That's good news for Deadpool fans, at least, right? For sure. Chris Schober in the live chat says, nice. Does Deadpool 3 have a release date yet, though? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, next year, as I said, uh, November 8th, 2024. November 8th, 2024. Deadpool 3. There you go. Now, the movie that everybody's wanting to see for the longest time, it took decades to happen, Good Burger 2. Good Burger 2 is now filming. Kel Mitchell shares footage from set. Uh, pff, guys, seriously. Did, <laughs> did, was anybody asking for this? Was anybody asking, really, for a Good Burger 2? I just, um, I, I must have seen the first one while it was in, uh, while I was at the video store and I just put it in and I was kind of like, meh, huh? It's kind of like a, a watered down version of Friday, right? Or sort of without the uh, stuff. Huh. Um, but they're back. I don't know. That's exciting for some people. I don't know who, but uh, Good Burger 2 um, will pick up nearly 30 years later and they're still flipping burgers. That's not good, man. That's not good. The first Good Burger is now streaming on Paramount Plus. Good Burger 2 is expected to release November 2023 and debut on the streaming platform Paramount Plus. So this is going to go straight to streaming. Okay. Well, hey. If it works on streaming, why not? And it's not, and keep the budget low, right? Keep the budget low. That's what I would say. Ice Road 2, Liam Neeson, action sequel, Ice Road, heading to Amazon. So that one's also going to go to streaming. But the first one was streaming in right to Netflix, right? Ice Road, uh, $17 million in biggest deal uh, thrashed out of this year's con market so far. Now, guys, I, I really liked the first uh, Ice Road because it had Amber Midthunder in it. Um, from Predator Prey, and I didn't see it in the theater. I think it had limited theater, but there was also it's it was on it's on on Netflix, right? Um, and you know how Liam Neeson does these small movies, these small action movies every year. Some of them are meh, some of them are good. Um, this one is one of the good ones. This is one that is worth checking out for sure, uh, because there's a dynamic there that he has with his brother. That really pays off towards the end. Uh, if you've heard me talk about it before, uh, it's good. It's just some of the visual effects in there, like with snow uh, avalanches and stuff like that, look good. No, but you're not watching it for that. You're watching it for like what Liam Neeson does in this role as a trucker trucking across ice. And as I said, it's got Amber Mid Thunder in there from Predator Prey, which makes me want to do kind of like a uh, a full live watch along for it. Because, well, she's awesome. She's awesome, man! And, uh, yeah, this is a movie that kind of, it, it stuck with me. It, uh, it, it's horrifying that, yeah, you're driving these trucks across ice and you don't know at any moment the ice could break away and uh, that's it for you, right? Um, and they, they play with that. They work with that. So an ice road two sounded very fascinating to me. And it's going to come to Amazon. But... It's not going to have Amber Mid Thunder in it, which kind of sucks because uh, it uh, it's apparently doesn't even take place in North America. It goes to the, like Nepal or something. Uh, he's like out in Nepal and then something happens on a road. It's really weird. Weird premise, man. Um, in the sequel, Neeson returns as big rig ice road driver Mike McCann, who, honoring his late brother's last wish, travels to Nepal to scatter his ashes on Mount Everest. Well, that's a bit of a spoiler for the first movie, but uh, don't worry. They play that off very well. They really do. So he wants to scatter his ashes over Mount Everest while on a packed tour bus traversing the deadly 12,000-foot terrain in the infamous Road to the Sky. McCain and his mountain guide encounter a group of Nepalese mercenaries. And, well, the... If you're fighting mercenaries, you definitely want Liam Neeson there, right? <laughs> um, 
not only to save themselves but a busload of innocent travelers so it's kind of like it's kind of like shades of ice road mixed with uh plane with um gerard butler that came out earlier this year right so production is due to start filming in the first quarter of 2024 which uh okay yeah so it'll, it, this one will start filming next year for a 2025 release ice road 2 and as i said uh the the first movie, it's it's one of those ones that you you just kind of look at it. Oh, it's Liam Liam Neeson doing his thing, but this but it pays off. Give it a chance, give it a chance. So I'll be looking forward to a nice road too. Why not? Yeah. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Wah, wah, wah. Chris Schober says, uh, "Have you ever watched the Once Upon a Deadpool movie?" No, I didn't. Um, I just I just didn't get around to it. The Little Mermaid comes out this week, and let's take a look at the projections for the box office. Box office haul for The Little Mermaid swimming to 120 million plus over the Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, it's a, a long weekend in the States. Here in Canada, we had a long weekend this last weekend, but this next weekend is a long weekend in the States. So, well, being projected for 120 million plus, that's almost double what Fast 10 just did, really. Little Mermaid's going to blow Fast 10 out of the water? Guys, I'm still hyped for this. This comes out tomorrow, and uh, I don't think... I, I, I might not be seeing it until Saturday because I'm going to go see it with my niece. But the projections here, the big budget remake is projected to earn $100 million, uh, in its first three days and $120 million on the on the holiday Monday. And uh, I'm hyped. Halle Bailey, I hear great things. I hear, I can't wait to see or hear her sing all of the familiar songs. My only apprehension was the runtime for Little Mermaid. The, the, the runtime for it was just a bit too long with for me coming in at uh, two hours and ten minutes, I believe. So I, uh, I'm kind of like, oh, well. Hopefully it, it just moves me with the with the with the sound, with the music, right? Uh, 73% right now, so that's good. It's not rotten, which is really good. 125 reviews and uh, just a snapshot review of a good one here from uh, the Times UK that says that's a lot to digest, and some viewers like the kids at their meltiness meal times will simply refuse to swallow it. What? And that's a good review. Get out of here with that nonsense. Uh, I was all in after seeing Halle Bailey's stunning work as Ariel. She's absolutely nails the part. Uh, she absolutely nails the part. Her rendition of Part of Your World is breaking, uh, breathtaking with its build and the passion and the drive of Bailey puts into it. So th that's great. That's good. Um, but I, we'll take a look at this more because this is going to be the topic of the weekend kind of thing. This is going to be topic for the rest of the, of the week and the Little Mermaid stuff. But the projections are... I think is what Disney's looking for. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a billion dollar film because it's not going to have that magic that Avatar has where they actually filmed a lot of it underwater. A lot of it's wire work and stuff like that. Uh, the, the special use of the lighting to try to make it look like they're underwater. But she's got to sing, right? Um, they can't have her actually floating underwater, opening up her mouth and having air bubbles come out. And it's just a risk of... You take one accidental hiccup in there and then you, you're, you're drowning all of a sudden, right? So they can't do that. I can understand that. Um, at least because in Avatar, when they go underwater, they're holding their breath. They're not talking out loud, right? It's, um, it's a tricky thing. So 120 to 125 million, that's really good. Really good. Uh, this year, clear from 100 million mark debut, the Super Mario Bros. had 146. Guardians just had 118. And even Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania that nobody liked had 108, which really says a lot about Fast 10 being $67 million opening. That Little Mermaid, people here in the North American audience wants to see 
Little Mermaid. So uh, yeah, but the budget for it is being reported at 250 million. So we'll weigh these. Uh, we'll weigh the results accordingly, for sure. Um, you know how scrutinous I am when it comes to these things. Uh, hey, what are you doing, camera? What he said to do that? Um, am I gonna have to spank you? I think so. Um, yeah. So uh, it's just two hundred fifty million dollar budget. 125 million opening is a good start, but it would have to have some uh, longevity. Uh, while Little Mermaid opens this week, next week is uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse and the Boogeyman. And then after that, you got Transformers, which isn't tracking all that well. And then three weeks after that, we've got The Flash. So I'm really looking forward to the, the month of June. May here has been kind of like meh. It's been like, what, I'm only going to see like five new movies or something like that in May. So it's it's been a bit of a slower haul for sure. Uh, but what do you guys think what The Little Mermaid's going to make? Do you, do you agree? Over or under? 120 million this weekend. Uh, let me know in the comments. Are you over 120 million or under? Um, I'll be shocked if it doesn't make 100. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Why all of a sudden am I getting parched? I don't know. I don't know, James. Why are you getting parched? All right. Asteroid City. Asteroid City debuted at Con. And some of the first reviews are coming out. Scarlett Johansson, Brian Cranston explain Wes Anderson method in Asteroid City, and apparently it's kind of getting mixed reception. But I'll watch it because of ScarJo. Actually, the cast is pretty big. Uh, it's got Maya Hawk in it uh, from Stranger Things. Really looking forward to her in this. But it's got that typical Wes Anderson flair. Brian Cranston, you can't go wrong with. Jason Schwartzman is in this. It's about like a period piece of people out in the desert saying that aliens are going to come, but then aliens actually show up or something like that, and it's really bizarre. They get quarantined out in Asteroid City. Uh, they call the community Asteroid City or something like that, uh, befitting the film, which is heavy on style and whimsy, but according to most critics, lacks much narrative depth. Uh, well, that's, that's a little bit of Wes Anderson's flair is that it's all style. Um, he's definitely got a, a very pungent <laughs> style and flair that if you're not on board with it, um, it may not work for you. But I, I, I'll i watch it because of Scardo. Brian Cranston's cool. Um, yeah, first reviews are kind of meh. But uh, Asteroid City is a due out this year and i would expect that uh well you know get to fare somewhat okay the cast is big it's got tom hanks in it which used to be something that would be like a huge selling point for a lot of people but uh june 23rd okay so this comes out the same weekend as the flash oh my god yeah, it's going to get buried. It's going to get buried. Uh, but this is a different audience. This is more of the art house, uh, pompous. Oh, it has to be a, a tour de force film. Otherwise, I don't go out and see it. So the runtime, an hour and 44 minutes. That's good for me. Wes Anderson hasn't succumbed to his own hubris that it's got to be a three hour film for me to make my statement. It's like, like how many directors have done that recently? Uh, and I'm not faulting Christopher Nolan or or Cameron for starring in the three-hour marathon movies, but they've just done it. Uh, who else did it? Um, Ari Aster did it with Bo is Afraid, three-hour film. Martin Scorsese with Killers of the Flower Moon, three-and-a-half-hour film. It's like, get out of here with that nonsense. At least Wes Anderson is still delivering something small, tight, and concise. Uh, with an hour and 44 running time, which is probably one of going to be one of its saving graces for me. 
when I go out and see this film, June 23rd, of course, I'm going to be prioritizing The Flash over this. But I'll go out and see it on that weekend for sure, and I'll report back with my straight over to the theater reaction. Talking about uh, ScarJo. You know, she worked with Florence Pugh in the Black Widow movie, and we need to watch the Black Widow movie here on this channel. But I guess not uh, everybody was happy that Florence Pugh was going to be uh, doing those big blockbuster movies. Uh, Florence Pugh says people in the indie film community were really peed off <laughs> when she joined the MCU uh, because they wanted to see her continue to do these smaller works, which she has done. She has done. So um, she's done smaller films that still have come out on like Netflix and stuff that nobody seemed to talk about. I did. But uh, yeah, uh, Black Widow, uh, she said they were like, great. Now she's gone forever. No, no. Uh, she still does smaller things like Don't Worry Darling and stuff. So um, what was it? The, the creative or something that she did on uh, on Netflix where she was like a, a nurse that came to investigate this girl that didn't eat food for like months. And it was really, it turned into a story about uh, like parental abuse. So that one looked, uh, that one was actually pretty good. Uh, I dug that and uh, yeah, people like they're like little women and stuff like that. And they're like, don't go to the MCU. Then you're going to be all, that's all you want to do is like these big blockbusters. We liked you in midsummer and stuff like that. Um, what was that? The Wonder. That's what it's called. The Wonder. Yeah. That's what... Uh, well, guys, we it seems like yesterday we talked about Florence Pugh as well. I championed her work. Uh, she she does great work. She does. She's, she's cognizant of what people are saying. And she knows that she wants to be able to do smaller projects too to expand her artistry of acting. They were like, now she's gone forever. She explained and quote, I'm like, no. I'm working as hard as I used to work. I've always done back-to-back -back movies. It's just people are watching them now. You have to be a little bit more organized with your schedule. So she's trying to, like, calm down, guys. Easy. Easy now. She's still going to do the smaller projects. It's just, again, uh, as you got to watch for them because they do come out. She's a good actress. And, yeah, um, she's going to be in um, Dune Part 2 coming out this year, which is going to be hopefully awesome. She's, she's somebody who has, who has that extra level. You hear me talk about that extra level in acting where they just kick it into that, wow, kind of, like, I can't believe that that, that performance was so good. Like, she's got that level of, of acting in her repertoire, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, let's talk about Jason Momoa next when the Minecraft movie, Jason Momoa, Minecraft movie adds what, we do in the shadow star, Matt Berry. So we got some casting news for this. Did you guys know that he was going to be in a Minecraft movie? People want him to be Lobo. They want him to be Lobo. So uh, what we do in the shadow star, Matt Berry, is now in talks to join Momoa in the upcoming adaptation of Minecraft. The thing with Minecraft is I don't know how that, like, you create your own world and stuff, right? So it's kind of like, I don't understand how that is going to translate into a film, but I'm guessing, um, is it going to be live action or is it going to be animated? Are they going to take a page out of uh, Super Mario and go that animated route? It's kind of hard when it, how could you do a live action movie where the entire world is just blocks? That one I'm kind of confused about. Napoleon Dynamite Hillmaker Jared Hess is now set to helm the film, Minecraft, with Jason Momoa. We know nothing about the plot, but it will somehow adapt the sandbox game developed, okay? And Minecraft is best-selling video game in history. So no hints there, but the release date is supposed to be April 4th, 2025, which is a bit of a ways away, guys, a movie. Not a series, a movie. So it's kind of like, hmm, hmm. I don't know about that. It'll be very curious to see what they do. They're like, if they make it a cartoon and it's blocky, then I'm fine with that. But uh, what we do in the Shadow Star, Matt Berry, in talks to join Jason Momoa in the Minecraft movie, due out 2025. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and we will talk about it. All right. 
guys, I don't really have that much more to do today uh, as well as far as topics. I know that we're on in, at a different time today because, um, well, I had some business stuff to do. And uh, we, we, we normally are on at 11 a.m. And we're not going to be on tomorrow for movie news either because tomorrow we are doing Survivor Finale at uh, I think 9.30. We're going to shoot for 9.30, but I got to do some grocery shopping tomorrow. So I'll try to be done that. But if it, even if we started at 10 and we run a little bit of overtime, that's fine. And then tomorrow we'll be starting FUBAR with Arnold Schwarzenegger on Netflix series. We'll, we'll be doing at least the first episode of FUBAR as well tomorrow. So uh, no movie news tomorrow, but we'll be back on Friday for sure for more movie news. Unless something huge breaks, something epic, something monumental. I just don't know what that would be. Um, but yeah. All right. What's next? Let's go into some hit or miss headlines. If it's a hit, we'll talk about it. If it's a miss, we'll move on. New Max Credits display irks creatives amid labor standoff. Uh, so what? Did they cut out the uh, the writers? from uh, HBO Max. HBO Max no longer provides specific credits for writers, directors, or other creatives. So, well, yeah, that's that's unacceptable. Um, guys, you shouldn't do that. Just give people credit. What the heck is wrong with you? The lack of specific details in the grouping of writers and directors under the merely creators has irked many creators. Okay, so it still says it. They just organized it a little bit differently. I don't know if that's enough to get my feathers ruffled. Yes! Pass. Princess Leia's dress, Star Lord's helmet, and Batman's life-size bat pod are up for sale. Which bat pod? Christian Bale's bat pod? Would you want to buy uh, Princess Leia's dress? Not that you could fit into it. Uh, I'm 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 too large for it. I I don't think it would look good on me either. <laughs> Star Lord's mask. That'd be interesting. Uh, do you got a picture of which bat pod? Please tell me you do. Please tell me that you do. It looks like you don't. Oh, no. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So that is the Nolan bat pod. A replica. Full-size replica of that. Oh, there's something from the thing. Right? Uh, Scarface script. Wow. The clown from uh, Poltergeist? That thing is creepy. Yeah, who would want that in your house? I mean, come on. Uh, oh, the um, the rock, uh, the rock cutter that uh, Andy used in um, Shawshank Redemption. That's another film that we should watch too. The Rock Hammer. Shield from Troy. Is that from Troy? Yeah. Cool, man. Those are cool artifacts. Uh, if you got some disposable income, and I mean disposable, guys, uh, that'd be kind of cool stuff. What would I get, though? Um, Bat Pod would be kind of cool. That's kind of a hit, right? Obi-Wan Kenobi star discusses one condition for potential Star Wars return. Joel Edgerton shares his thoughts on a potential return. Uh, I was really happy that he came back for Obi-Wan. It was cool to see him interact with you and McGregor. Guys, again with your storytelling, you got Joel Edgerton, you got you and McGregor. Put them in as many scenes as they can be because they're just awesome actors and they would bounce off each other and take it to that next level that Obi-Wan just kind of seemed to miss out on. Um and he was awesome. Joel Edgerton Joel Edgerton vastly underrated actor. Uh, so he's got a quote here, quote, I didn't have to push that hard for the fight. I think there were, was already a feeling that they wanted to see me mess a little bit with the violence in that series. But yeah, I was definitely keen to push it myself. I don't know. I believe that uh, should turn up. So he goes on to talk about the fighting stuff there. And uh, he says, I feel like in many ways that story has maybe come full circle or completed itself in a way that it needed to. Talking about the story of uh, Owen taking care of Luke, right? Uh, but I'm sure there's something that if uh, they had a bright idea, I would definitely put the Hessian on again. I always joke that 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 it's Tatooine fabric of choice. It's like a potato sack 
like brown kind of material. I'd love to see one else make a cover of Vogue Tatooine. Uh, yeah, the costume was like a potato sack. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I don't know. Could there be a more story to tell of Owen trying to raise Luke Skywalker? Yes. Yes, there is. And it seemed like um, him and o uh, Obi-Wan uh, came to an understanding at the end of uh, the Obi-Wan series that um, it became fractured again by the time New Hope comes around, right? Because he was like very jaded on him, saying that that wizard's just a crazy old man kind of thing. So there's got to be something else that could happen that would explain that beef, right? There's something else there. Uh, there's possible. Somebody's just got to come up with that good idea, make that pitch. And if, if it's good enough, Joel Edgerton said that he would be on board with that. That's a hit. That's a hit topic. Nikki Haley to participate in CNN Town Hall, moderated by Jake Tapper. So uh, following in the footsteps of the uh, Donald Rump Town Hall, Nikki Haley's also a, uh, what is she, um, She's on the bad guy team, right? She's on the uh, red team. <laughs> uh, she's on the Republican time side. Um, okay, well, CNN is just trying to hit all their bases here. So uh, who is uh, DeSantis is supposed to announce his launch tonight, and he'll probably get a town hall as well. Um, I don't. I don't really care. It, that it splashed on the big trades. We had to talk about it. So, there you go. Miss. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me today. Um, there really wasn't that much more to talk about. Um, it's kind of a shorter news story today. I'm just refreshing my uh, my uh, Twitter feed to see if there's anything trending here. We'll, we'll scan the, the headlines. I'm just checking my... Uh, YouTube uh, subscription feed too to see if there's any new trailers that have dropped. Um, there's a trailer of that video game of Will Smith. Uh, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch that trailer. Let's just go over to the Twitterverse. I don't expect much here either. Milo Manham, Ron Starper, Actors Roundtable, Pedro Pascal, Kieran Culkin. Isabel Hubert, Michelle Yeoh, and Selma Hayek at Khan. Khan's got to start, uh, stop pretty soon here, right? Wheel of Time, Season 2. All right. American Born Chinese, Michelle Yeoh, and Daniel Wu. It's now streaming on Disney Plus. It's a series. Rotten Tomatoes score of 94%. Okay. Barbie. Yeah, they're funny and brash and confident and then just go stop. All of a sudden she thinks, oh my God, enough. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Barbie. That one, there's, that one looks like the epitome of stupid fun, right? Okay, yeah. So lots of more, lots more Barbie coverage here. Margot Robbie for Vogue. Oh, Jesus. Legs, legs. Just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah, she was born to play Barbie. Great casting. Is she our invisible woman in the uh, Fantastic Four? My feelings are starting to tell me that she's going to be. Filming is wrapped on Maxine. Okay, cool. So we, the third movie in the Pearl and X trilogy is done. That should be coming out next year probably, right? I don't think it'll be this year. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, and there's Halle Bailey to a leap on um, um, Barbie soundtrack. That's what we talked about yesterday, right? All right, guys, that's it for me. Just a bit of a shorter show today. I apologize. These stories will be cut out and put up on the channel later on. Hit that thumbs up button, guys. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Mirror Domains. Thank you for joining me in the live chat, Chris Schober. See you tomorrow, or yeah, or Friday for more movie news.